hey guys, I just thought I'd take a minute and talk to you. Um, I actually did not record this or today's session. I kind of wanted to just focus and do what I had to do instead of worrying about if you guys could see me or where I should place the camera or something like that. Um, in the last session I had the other day, I ran the yo-yo test. Uh, some of you guys might be familiar with the yo-yo. It's a sprint fitness test. You have to run 20 meters out, touch the baseline with your foot, and run 20 meters back. Um, created by Dr. Jens Bangsbo. I think that's how you say his name. Uh, in college, I actually set the record for the yo-yo. I had 42, a record of 42. And then I had two knee surgeries, COVID hit. So unfortunately there was a span of like a year and a half where I wasn't able to work out. I wasn't, excuse me, I wasn't able to get on the field. Um, so the other day was one of my first times taking the yo-yo since my knee surgeries that were back to back. They were both ACL on the same knee, my lucky right knee. Um, but I ended up getting a 30, which was, great I'm personally I think that was amazing you know you have to start somewhere um, and I'm very thankful that I was able to get 30 after all this time it's something that I know I'm gonna be able to work back up work my way back up and fix my goal is to get 40 within the next two weeks and hopefully from there before I leave I can hit 45 maybe 50. That might be a stretch, but 45 would be great. But today, what we did is I got in there, we did warm-ups. Warm-ups are usually the same. It's just a lot of stretching, some light exercises, just to get the blood flowing and the muscles warmed up. You know, you can't go from zero to 100, otherwise you're gonna have a huge risk of injury. You have to get yourself, your body accumulated to the level of play or the level of training that you're about to do. So we did that. Um, half the sessions are always spent outside. I'll do a lot of my running outside. Today we, work, we worked a lot, focused so much on core. You know, Kenny was my trainer, Kenny, who is God's gift to this world, by the way. He's been helping me see a lot of like behind the scenes body mechanics. You know, once you understand how the body works and what you need to do physically, mentally, mechanically, to get your body to do what you want it or what you need it to do, to step up to a certain level of play, it, it's it's honestly mind blowing. It changes the way I think. Uh, ever since being with Kenny, you know, I've thought, like, <laughs> I'm trying to find my words. Sorry. I run differently because I think about it differently. I lift differently because I think about it differently. Today we focus so much on core. He was teaching me how when you're running on the soccer field or anywhere but for me the soccer field when I'm running you know I'm thinking I need to get from here to here as fast as I possibly can and so I will just put all my might and all my effort into just swinging my body and just running getting close to the ground and digging deep and like really pushing myself forward but mechanically that's probably not the best way to run and so he's teaching me today how the core is probably arguably one of the most important things for you as an athlete to strengthen to make sure is, in, is is you know in a good position to help your body because when you're running your upper body is moving obviously with your arms your shoulder your chest and back everything's pushing into it but if this is not controlled by your core if this you cannot maintain this energy in a positive motion by your core that means there's extra work for your legs I usually come and see Kenny on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays to kind of space everything out evenly. Um, Fridays will be a lot of weightlifting, core, what else? Agility, that's the word I'm looking for. Wednesdays is a lot of ag agility and running. Monday, Mondays, Mondays vary because on Sundays I play pickup with friends. Saturdays I'll play pickup with friends. So my weekend's really booked. Tuesdays and Thursdays um, I try to recover because again my body's going from bare minimum after my knee surgeries and COVID and everything from bare minimum back to the professional level I was at and I need to get out once again. Um, so Tuesdays and Thursdays are lighter for me, but I'll try and drag Jagan out of the house, my brother, and we'll play um, 
soccer tennis or pass the ball or do some soccer drills uh, or go to Planet Fitness. I have a black card membership so I can take Jagan as my guest because he won't get a membership on his own. Oh, I love them. Love them so much. I'm gonna go fly to Puerto Rico. I'm gonna visit family, travel the island a bit, make my way to Maya West. Uh, Maya West is where my stadium is. It holds about 13,500 people, I believe. Um, when I get down there, we're going to be training twice a day for preseason. We'll have our games on the weekends. Our stadium's built on a beach. It's just gorgeous. You literally look to the left and there's the beach. It's built on the beach. You see it right there. And then you look to the right and it's the mountain line. It's so gorgeous. It's so beautiful. But we were also lucky enough, blessed enough, not lucky, blessed. We were blessed enough to have um, a beach soccer court now. So I'm so excited to get back into beach soccer. I think it's, I think it's so challenging. To me, it's harder to play beach soccer than soccer on turf or grass. My ex-boyfriend's family is throwing me a going away party, which is a long story there. Um, <laughs> I'm so close with his mom and his brother. Um, we ended on good terms, I guess. It's still a little difficult for me at least, but um, they're throwing me a going away party and they're some of the most precious people in this world, so I'm very excited about that. Um, I'm very thankful that they're in my life and they care enough about me to do that. So I'll get to see all those old family, family friends. And then I have another friend who's throwing, his family's throwing me a going away party. My family's throwing me a going away party. So I'm really just excited to see everyone one last time before I leave because honestly, I think the next time I'll be back in the States is just to visit for Christmas. So it won't be for months, but I'm very excited about my journey. This will be the first time I'm ever on my own. I went, my parents, my mom and my dad, they're still together. I was blessed to have an amazing childhood, amazing. I'm super close with my brother, as you guys know. Um, my mom and my dad, we're a pretty tight-knit family, so I went from high school and my college was only an hour away from the house, so we were still, they were still able to come to my games. I was still able to go back home for Jaden's soccer games or to watch my dad play in his indoor league um, or for my mom to stop by and have coffee. Like We were still able to be with each other. Um, and then after college, that's when I had my second knee surgery and that's when COVID hit as well. So after that, I wasn't able to move anywhere. I had to go back home, um, which I, I was super thankful for again, just because, you know, time with family is precious. You don't know how much you have left. Um, cherish every moment of it, right? So that's what I've been trying to do. I'm not saying it's the easiest thing in the world, you know, being 23 and living with your mommy and daddy, but <laughs> I'm trying to make the most of it. And I think they are too. Um, just for fun. We're gonna run camps for kids, you know. My Spanish is no bueno. I know un poco, a little bit, but not much. Every time I go down there, I tell them, only talk to me in Spanish. And then my Spanish gets to be, like I get to understand and start to communicate, but I've only lived there for like months at a time. Now I'm finally gonna be able to get down there and get immersed with it. So I'm gonna tell those kids, you know, Solo Espanol, only Spanish, only talk to me in Spanish. Those kids are so precious. I remember we used to run kids camps. It was a sports camp, we used to do it at our stadium and all the girls on the team would like either stick with a group or they would stay at a station. And since I don't really know Spanish, I was just a floater, but it's so easy to connect with kids without having to talk to them. Like, you wouldn't believe it. And it's, Oh, I love kids so much. <laughs> I'm so excited to move down there and just play and just live the island life, you know, paradise. Who gets to who gets to play professional ball? Like, you know, hopefully someday I'll move to Australia for a year, maybe UK for a year, Spain. I would love to go to Spain. Just like to travel the world while I can, while I don't have a family. Take you guys along with me. <laughs> Because every country plays soccer so differently. Like the soccer I learned here in the States, I didn't start playing soccer till I was in high school. But I told you guys that, you know, I, 
I didn't start playing soccer till I was in high school and the soccer I learned from the States is so much different than the soccer that I learned down in Puerto Rico. And the soccer I learned in Puerto Rico even is so different than the soccer that I got to play against in Barcelona, in Real Madrid. They're all different. I love, I love different cultures. I love to try different foods, to experience different churches even, like just everything about it traveling I know my dad is jealous my mom is too probably but I know my dad's jealous <laughs> they want me to move for sure that way they can come and visit me that way they get to have an excuse to go travel <laughs> but yeah alright I'm gonna start talking your ear off it was about 15 minutes out <laughs> me just being real with you guys um, I will see you soon